It's really powerful. Biocon has delivered 16% top line growth at a group level. Uh, our, we have registered uh, revenues of 2,187 crores for the first nine months of this fiscal. EBITDA has grown 17% to 550 crores. And in terms of PACT, we are up 16% at 301 crores. Um, the first nine months uh, performance has uh, been very steady and uh, we are very uh, pleased that we are on track with uh, whatever we have uh, projected. Uh, we believe that uh, our uh, all our businesses continue to grow well. Uh, we have, uh, at, a, uh, at a group level, uh, realized uh, a good EBITDA and PAT margins of 25% and 14% and, uh, respectively. Our R&D spend uh, for the first nine months uh, is at 102 crores. And in terms of our net cash position, we are uh, at the end of Q3, we are at uh, 481 crores. So overall, we are in a very good uh, position uh, and we are very confident uh, that we will end the year on a note of good growth. Uh, we have a very strong order book for Q4. so. This gives us the added confidence of knowing that we will deliver a good growth uh, uh, aspect in terms of our FY14 numbers uh, when we announce them in April this year. Uh, for this particular quarter, we have delivered a 105 crore PAT, which uh, I must also comment that has also been due to a lower R&D spend. Uh, uh, which was at about 20 crores this, uh, this particular quarter. The main reason why our uh, R&D spend this quarter uh, and perhaps for the first nine months are uh, lower than what they should be is largely because of many of our India trials uh, have had to uh, be deferred or put on hold or shifted out, outside the country on account of the moratorium on clinical trials in India. Um, and of course, it, uh, there are other aspects, uh, you know, uh, clinical spends are very lumpy, are very dependent on regulatory approvals and, you know, contractual payments and advance payments made to CROs. But uh, we do expect that over the coming years, R&D spend will continue to rise. We're very pleased that uh, all our uh, clinical programs are progressing very well. Uh, we've had two big successes this uh, fiscal, the first being the approval of Alzumab for psoriasis and most recently the most exciting approval for the world's first biosimilar Trastuzumab, which we just launched recently under our brand name CanMap. So overall I believe that uh, you know our businesses are doing very well, uh, you know our research services business continues to really really outpace competition and continues to surge ahead. Uh, our research services business has registered a very strong and robust 35% uh, growth year on year and uh, it is well placed to end the year on a high note. So uh, overall I would say Biocon's uh, business is in, in, in a very robust shape. Uh, all our uh, you know, investments are beginning to deliver very well for us. Uh, our R&D programs are well on track. Uh, we are very uh, you know, optimistic and um, encouraged by all the you know, progress that we are making on all the vertical fronts. Our insulins continue to do very well in global markets. Our Malaysia facility is on track and we expect uh, our drug products facility to be, um, you know, commissioned uh, by the end of this fiscal, uh, and we expect our uh, drug uh, substance facility to be completed next fiscal. So I think overall uh, we are very uh, much on track to deliver on our billion-dollar goal by uh, 28 FY18. So I think it's. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a good uh, growth story and I think Biocon is highly differentiated as uh, a, a stock goes 
we are the only uh, biopharma, biotech stock in the country with uh, many, many levels of differentiation. So I will stop there and uh, take on questions.